Hi guys, I'm Turtle. And I'm Bear from Old Souls Travel. And last week we went through our tour of Kirokidia, which was our favorite day trip from Larnaca. But since most of you will land in Larnaca, we decided that we wanted to give you like a more guide of different things to do and things you can do from there if you're gonna spend a few days. Larnaca is a really cool city and it's right on the coast and it's full of a bunch of cool history. One such example is the Agios Lazaros. And so this is, especially if you're Christian, it's a really important spot because it is where Lazarus, after he came forth from the dead, he moved here and he lived here for the last 30 years of his life and then he was buried there. So if you want to see his final resting place, it is here on Cyprus. And if you go over to the coast, there's another cool site. This is the uh, fort there. And it's a medieval fort. It dates back to the Ottoman era. And uh, it's cool. It's a pretty simple fort, but it's had this nice courtyard. And there's also some remnants of uh, some of the weaponry they use there. They have a museum there with a bunch of the weapons. So that's pretty cool to check out. And if you're ready for a break from the history and want to see some really beautiful nature, there's four salt lakes that are really close by there. And if you're there between November and March, this is the rainy season. You should take advantage of that by going over there because they get all full and like thousands and thousands of flamingos show up and that makes for a really good Instagram. Larnaca is a cool place to visit for a couple of days. But if you have a couple extra days, there's also some excellent day trips. And our first and favorite is Kirokidia, which we talked about last week. Yeah, this place is really amazing. And especially for its age, it's at least 11,000 years old. You get to go into caves where they first lived and then you're really gonna be surprised by all of the development and all of the building that was there. And the cherry blossoms made it really beautiful. I definitely recommend that you go there. Yeah, it was really amazing. If you guys want to see the full tour, check up here or over here, one of these areas. <laughs> and you can see the full tour is about 12 minutes. We go into detail and tell you all about the history. It's a really awesome area. Another cool day trip about an hour and a half away is to go up to the Trios mountain range. Just make sure when you go to get in the car that you get on the right side and that you're driving on the correct side of the road. Okay, time to go and get in the passenger side. Oh, oh shoot. Wrong side. That's the driver's side. Yeah, the driving was, let's call it a highlight of the trip. It was my first time driving on the opposite side of the road. And it's also on the opposite side of the car. So that was really, really complicated. Luckily I had a co-pilot who was like, no, you're supposed to be in the other lane, dude, get in the other lane. We were even following this one dude who was probably having the same problem. And the weight of the car is strange. So he like just straight up sideswiped the parked car. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Oh, and if that isn't enough, there's rain and snow up on Mount Olympus and it can be hairy and all these great winds back and forth which is awesome unless there are rock slides, but we'll get back to that a little bit more in a minute. There's 10 Byzantine UNESCO painted churches in this region, and they're really beautiful. They have like the painted walls and everything, and uh, we were really excited to see that. This is the Church of Panagia Asenau, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and it is one of the UNESCO protected painted churches of the Todos region. And it's supposed to be open until four o'clock today. We're about 2.30. So uh, we opened the gate and we're gonna try to go in. And hopefully we can, and hopefully we can record. But we'll see. Unfortunately, the church was closed. Don't know what that was about with the hours. Maybe they were different because of the unnamed 
medical situation that we were dealing with. But uh, it was really beautiful to walk around and the architecture is really cool and it was in this nice courtyard and then obviously it's up on the mountains so there's all the beautiful views of the mountains and the valleys below. So it was well worth it. Yeah, but we needed to get on the road because there was still one that we knew was open and it was in this beautiful village. The mountain villages there are renowned for their beauty and again, cherry blossoms which are gorgeous this time of year. Yeah, their villages are really cool. Um, like, I think there's seven different ones in that area and they all have their own little charm. We decided to go to the Calapianoitis village, hope I pronounced that right. Um, and that is where there is another one of the UNESCO churches. The church there is really nice. It's one of the larger ones. It's called the Agios Ionis Lapodistus, I believe. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. But uh, we were able to go inside that one and the paintings were really beautiful. Think Meteora or other of the similar uh, Greek Orthodox churches that you'll see while you're traveling around. But much like those, you cannot film inside. So you have to take pictures with your mind and then run over to the gift shop. And so we were able to take something home from there to remind ourselves of it. We went to a couple of the churches that are way up in the mountains that have the beautiful painted walls and ceilings, similar to what they have in Meteora, um, same, same era, uh, Byzantine era. And that was really cool. Unfortunately, most of the smaller ones were closed, but we were able to go to the big one, which was awesome. And we got to right. see some of the art. Unfortunately, we weren't able to film it. Yeah, so you can't film it. We won't have any videos of that, unfortunately, but we'll it was amazing. You need to definitely check it out. And then when you're done, you should go over to the bookstore. Because uh, we went over to the bookstore and that is where we got these wines here um, and it was four of them for 10 euros which I think is a great deal um, and they're uh, they're local Cypriot wines um, they're How good of a deal we'll find out when we can yeah, well, that's true minute. that's true but uh, they are all from Cyprus and we kind of need them tonight because the rest of the story is we were driving down Mount Olympus and uh, we were coming around a blind corner on the correct side of the road, mind you, and there was a giant rock in the way, and we were swerving to miss the rock, and somebody came around the blind corner, so we had to swerve to miss them, and we kind of screwed up my very first time screwing up a rental car. So we had to go trade it out and everything. It's yeah. been a long night. And we're going to start with the other side, I think, yes. right? We're, we're going to start at the, the other side. side. Brendan's going to so, tell us a tiny bit about these things as much as we could know. So there's not a whole lot of information about it. You can't find information online because they're really small um, distributors. Um, and most of it is in Greek. And we can't read Greek. <laughs> uh, but I think we have it outlined from like the most bitter to the sweetest. We prefer sweet wine, so we're expecting we're going to like these ones better. Right. Um, first one is... We think it's a red wine. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a red wine. It's 15%. They normally call that like a red wine liquor. Couldn't find anything on this company other than it's out of Lepkosia or uh, as the Cypriots call it, Nykosia. Um, so, uh, but all the grapes that one should grown. be interesting, especially because we know nothing about it. Right, all the grapes were grown in this one specific area that we were driving through today. So that works right. out really nicely. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and try it. Let's try that one. Okay, let's do and it. And we'll move to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then eventually maybe we'll forget that we had to trade our rental car for another rental car. Ouch. doesn't have legs. Nope, no legs. It does smell more like liquor. Oh, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, the sherries that we had in uh, in Spain. Okay. Um, it's got that same kind of a pruney flavor to it. It's okay. not as syrupy. Uh, but it is still very sweet and has a, it's stronger in liquor. You can, you can tell it. It reminds me a lot of the sherry. Without being as thick. 
Hibiscus. It is another wine liquor wine. Liqueur, yep. I did find out about this Sodap. Sodap is a uh, cooperative of like a thousand families of wine growers that got together and mm -hmm. they were able to pool their money and their efforts to get like top of the line equipment to make wine. That's pretty cool. And uh, that's always good. It's good to, especially in a country whose economy can sometimes go in waves to have something that at least assures that uh, everybody gets a wage in the end of the day. Maybe even less legs. Smells about the same. Yeah, it's got more of that brown color to it, mm -hmm. less of a red wine color. This actually tastes more brandyish. Okay. This is, you can tell, I believe, you can tell that this is usually a more expensive wine. I know I saw it listed for eight euros instead of three. So. Whoa! Cha-ching! Yes. Budget! Buy it from the monks, baby! <laughs> but uh, I could drink this one. I don't want to say it's my favorite wine I've ever had. Right. better but still not good right yeah it's my second favorite though oh really mm -hmm. i still think like this is the favorite for sure right right like we should see i might have to try this one we again might, we might have to refrigerate these two and see if they're a little bit better refrigerated this mm -hmm. one this one i could drink tonight we probably will this one i think we should refrigerate and i think this one if you wanted to refrigerate it you could that one's going in the trash i think this one gets poured down the sink no offense to the people from Abacdictor of Chickamauks. You're just not good at that, man. It's amazing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Cypress does have some really good grapes. We were able to eat some eight grapes and... Uh... Yeah, I like this one better. I, I, yeah. I like this one better. Really? So it was kind of a crazy day up in the mountains, but... I think it's well worth it. Just make sure you look out for the rocks and other people driving on the wrong side of the road and invest in the car insurance because it's definitely worth it. And the next morning, if you wake up early because you didn't drink too much wine, luckily we didn't like it that much so we didn't have to fight with it, you can go on this really cool road trip to Limassol. Uh, we did not do that. We had to get to Paphos. I wish that we did because it looked like a really cool place. Yeah, Limassol is a really cool city and there's also a lot of history, kind of like Larnaca, and they have a couple of castles. I think especially the Colossi Castle is really cool. It's where Richard the Lionheart actually wed one of his wives after he conquered the island, so that's really cool history. It was actually built in the 13th century by the Knights of Hospitaller, which are a rival of the more common Knights Templar. But I heard they had a lot of hospitality. Mm. I heard it actually means spectacular hospitality. Oh, <laughs> I read that somewhere. I'm sure I did. <laughs> but it's a cool little castle and uh, it's got a nice courtyard and it also has the remnants of an ancient sugar factory, which would have been really important in the time. I told you they were sweet. And something really cool near Limassol is the Temple of Apollo. This dates back to being used between 700 BCE and 300 CE. And Apollo was very important here, maybe not as important as Aphrodite, but I heard they used to hook up, but you'll have to learn about that, I think, next week. Another cool place to hit if you're there is to go to Corian and Corian is like 6,000 years of history, not quite as old as Quaketia, mm -hmm. but uh, pretty old. Most of the stuff you see there though is from the Roman era, not too dissimilar from Sparta. If you wanna go back and look for Sparta with us, feel free to do that. But again, a lot of Roman stuff, everything's built on top of things, so it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is really cool. It is a UNESCO site as well, and you know how much we love UNESCO sites. Um, not only is there Roman architecture, there's also some remnants of the Christian times there in the 5th and 6th century. Like there's a church and some buildings there. But I think the highlight is probably the theater. The theater is really beautiful. It's been really well reconstructed and it was just preserved in the first place. But I think the coolest part about the theater is where it is. So you look over to the left and you see the awesome valley. And then right in front of you is the coast. 
So, I mean, I think it's really amazing that like the ancient Romans and the ancient Greeks would put these theaters in these really beautiful places all on their own. Yeah, we're gonna see a lot of those in the next few months. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel, wait till you see some of these other sites we're going in their theaters because we've seen some ridiculously nice theaters in the last couple months. And we also have a lot of cool stuff that we've already seen. We already did a whole Greek series that came out really wonderful and has been really popular. Thank you guys for tuning yes, in and watching so those. We really, really treasure your support and you're following us along on these trips. And uh, I just love you guys for, uh, for all the supportive comments. It's wonderful. Yeah, our time in Cyprus was really awesome as well. And we're going to be going over that in the next couple of weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that. And uh, like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. And as always, find, find yourself, yourself on the journey. journey.